This book is called Organizing from the Inside Out. It's a book by Julie Morgenstern, New York Times bestseller. It's the foolproof system for organizing your home, your office, and your life. Right, definition of organized. Organized is not how the room looks. It means if you can find things easily. My room looks atrocious. Everything seems to be in disarray, but yet I can find things very easily most of the time. I know where my pants is on the floor, and I know where on the floor it is. So by definition, I am organized. There are three major steps to get organized. Analyzed, which means do a gap analysis, where you are, where you want to go, you know, how you're going to get there. Strategize, create a plan, schedule, you know, how you're actually going to get there and do the things. Attack, do the organizing according to your personality and how you like things to be grouped. For example, you may be a logical person. You may like to put things in a logical sequence. Or you may do things according to how you use them, the number of times you use them. Three errors you may come across. There are technical errors, like items that have no home, inconvenient storage, things are broken, you know, shelves are broken, you have more stuff than storage space, complex and confusing system, out of sight, out of mind, where, you know, you use things once and then you put it, you don't put it away and then you forget about it, or organizing is very boring. And there's the external error where you're too busy, you're changing your lifestyle, let's say you're company is merging, or you're going unemployed, or you're having a wedding, or you're becoming employed, or you're going back to school, or getting divorced, or anything, you have uncooperative partners, which they may not allow you to do certain things and tidy up, or you just may have kids, <laughs> and you got lit or you live in tiny apartment in Manhattan, you got limited space, and there are psychological errors, you know, you may think, you didn't have much growing up, so now you want to have a ton of stuff everywhere to say, oh, hmm, I have a lot of stuff. Or you may think, I'm very unstructured, I love chaos, or you just may not have any goals of what you want to do, and therefore they're unclear, and that's the reason why you can't be organized. So step one, analyze. These are the main things. Find out what is working, find out what is not working, what items are most essential to you, why do you want to get organized and what is causing the problems? What is working? Come on, nothing is working. <laughs> Even if you think nothing is working, if you look closely enough, you'll see that some things do work. You know, when I want to get a knife, I know that it's in the knife block. You know, when I, I don't know where my glasses are in the morning, but I know that my knife is in the knife block. So you can find some things very easily. Find out what are those things that you can find very easily. Then find out what is not working. Make a list of everything frustrating to you. Go and find things that you're annoyed about so we can find everything that is not working. This is a time to actually get annoyed. Make a list and find every little thing that annoys the heck out of you. Then find what items are most essential to you. So there are a couple of ways to do this. Uh, one way is to think of it in terms of goals. Like, let's say, hey, I want to bake a cake you know, or play with games. So then, you know, find all the baking stuff and find out, okay, I need X, Y, Z to bake a cake. This stuff I may not need and this stuff uh, I definitely don't need, you know. Another way to find out what is essential is to do the 80-20 rule. That 20% of your stuff is all you need. Imagine you had a fire. What would you keep? Another way is to get some stickers or take a logbook and every time you use something, put a sticker on it or write it down. And then over a month, after the month happens, you can come back and see, yeah, I use this, I use that, I use this. And the, all the things that don't have stickers, you know, I never used. So I don't really need them. You have to know why you want to get organized. If you don't know why you're doing it, you'll give up. You know, you got to know why you want to have a career, why you want to work out. You got to know why you want to eat healthy. If you don't know the reason for it, every the first time you have a sign of frustration or you have a temptation, you're just going to give up. You got to know what is causing the problem. Identify what errors are there. You know, is it a psychological error? Is it a lifestyle error? Is it a, you know, container error? Step two, strategize. The analyze step was about understanding what is going on 
Strategizing is about knowing how to get to where you want to go. There are two steps, the kindergarten model of organization and estimating the time. The kindergarten model. You know how you walk into a kindergarten room, everything is so nice and laid out and tidy. You know, the, the room is divided into activity zones. There's reading, there's playing, there's things for coats, there's eating. It's very easy for a child to focus on one thing at a time. Everything needed for your coats and shoes and diapers and stuff is all in one place. You know, and the reading is all by the reading place. Everything has a clear, well-labeled home. It says, you know, coats. And there it says books. And there's a visual menu of everything, you know. The, the coats might be red or the books might be blue or they might have a bookshelf that you know it's for books and a coat shelf that you know it's for coats and everything is visual. So the first step is, in the kindergarten model, is to define your zone. You take a sheet of paper and you make three columns. First column is activity, second is supplies, third is storage unit. Like, for example, you got the TV room. What do you need? You need the remote and the videos. So what would you have? Maybe, possibly, you'd get an armoire with drawers to put your remote and your videos there. Or reading, you would. What would you need? Books and newspapers. What storage unit? You might have bookcases or a magazine rack to put stuff. So you got to define your zones with each type of activity. Name the activity, write the supplies, and write what's a possible storage unit. Then you map out the space. You try and see where the clutter is. If books are piled up on the sofa, you know that you like to read, and you may need to make a reading zone. If your papers are piled up on your desk, you know that you got a lot of papers and you got to find out what to do with all those papers. Maybe you need a pile for to be read and a pile for read already and a pile for garbage. You know, think about the relationships of one activity to another. You may want the TV at one end of the living room and the reading at the other end if you like having the whole family together. You know, you've got to map out the space. And then think about the architectural configurations. What are the problems? Maybe the room is not big enough. Maybe the room is too wide, too long, too thin. Maybe you don't have enough room on your desk or on your computer. You know? Then second step is estimate the time. If you don't properly estimate the time, you'll get discouraged when things are taking longer than usual. You know, Because you're going to think, oh, I'll get to it one morning before I go to the pool. Uh, if you do that, it'll never happen. And, oh, it's going to take 20 minutes. And then if it takes an hour, you're going to give up. So you got to make a calendar appointment with yourself. And you got to properly estimate the time of doing the work. Then, after you map out the space and you estimate the time, rearrange your furniture right now. It'll give you a sense of accomplishment and help you better to visualize the space where things go. Step three, attack. These are the steps. Sort. Purge, assign a home, containerize, and equalize, or for short, space. Sort. Pick up each item. You know, let's say you're going to attack the dining room table. Pick up each item and think, do I use this? Do I love this? What category is this in? You know? Or you're going to catch, do the kitchen cabinet, the spice cabinet. Do I use this spice? Do I love this spice? What type of spice is this in? Identify what is important to you right now. Like, for example, spices, if you want to group them. They may go alphabetically or by how often you use it or by flavor or by dish. So attack what is visible first. Don't get sidetracked. If you can't group them within three seconds of picking it up, put it in a different pile. If you pick up something and say, I don't know what this is, put it in a different pile. If you say this belongs to the cooking group, put it there. Work on one area and then only then move to another area. Or else you're never going to get anything done. Purge. Put everything you don't need into the garbage or donate to a charity or a friend or put it into long-term storage. Make sure you get rid of it. Assign a home. Give each item a single consistent home. And these are the guidelines. Make sure the sizing of the home is right for the items. You don't want to have uh, a book that's two inches wide in a one-inch box. You know, If it doesn't fit, it's not going to stay there for long-term. Put things in a single function space. For example, t-shirts in one drawer and pants in another. Logical sequ sequencing is put things where it's logical to be. For example, you got your uh, pants and your shirts 
and you may want to be able to pick one pants and one shirt so you can sometimes put them in the same drawer so that you know where they are. Accessibility, make things easy to retrieve. You know, if you got high cabinets and people can't get it or people can't see what's there, then it's just going to pile up and you're not going to know where things are. Safety, make sure nothing will break or there are hazards when you need to get them. You know, stay away from those high cabinets. Those things may be only used for long-term storage. And containerize will help to group similar items. To let you know when you have too much of one item, it helps with showing your personal style. You know, when you have a container, you could put similar items there. And you get, imagine you're a drunk drawer. You take everything, you put them in, one, in the drunk drawer, but you want to be able to group similar items and have similar, smaller containers for each drunk junk group, you know? And then you can put everything in them and then you can see in your container, oh my gosh, I got so much junk in this. Why do I need a billion half broken crayons? And also containers, if you go to one of the container stores, you can get nice cute containers, containers and it'll show you, you know, make the room much nicer. There are different types of containers. Uh, you can choose containers that you love. You know, they're pretty. You can make sure they're containers are very sturdy, that they're going to last from taking it put out, putting it in. Make sure they're easy to handle and make sure the items fit without overcrowding. You want to be able to, you know, instead of putting a billion stuff, you want to be able to get the things you want easily. So measure the space and the container to make sure you get the right container size and make sure you get labels for them so that you know easily and quickly what is in each container. And the last step is after a few weeks, you equalize. You keep checking how you're doing. Can you remember the zones? Are the things still in the same place? Do a performance review and make sure to keep on track and keep assessing the situation so that you keep on top, top of things. You can do it after a daily uh, you know, check. You can do it a weekly check or two weeks, but make sure it's not more than a month. You want to be able to know how you're keeping a track of everything. And that is the summary of organizing from the inside out. Thank you and have a wonderful day.